day four. Four days till I get my leg chopped off. Now, what I've been up to today? Well, I started off by looking at the house in a different light. Now, I had looked at the house once and had decided not too much needed to be changed. But when I looked at it again, there's actually a few things you just don't think of. So, for example, the width of the doorways. Will a wheelchair go through? The height of the door handles. The door handles are three quarters of the way up the door at about this height for me. In a wheelchair, you would have no chance of reaching the door handles and they're knobs, so I couldn't even pull them down. Um, the width of the doors. Now, I measured the width of the doors, uh, but you don't know how wide your doors are, do you? Well, mine are 710 millimetres, which is apparently the average width of a door. And only a slim wheelchair would fit through there. A standard size wheelchair probably would struggle with your hands on the rails as well. So that gives you doorway problems. Um, the transitions between rooms. So some of the rooms have got carpets between them um, and there's no lintels in between. Sometimes there's a change of floor surface between carpet and some other floor surface and there's a lintel in between on the doorway. Trouble for a wheelchair. Things in the corridors, uh, things on the floor, mats. So the cat's bowl, for example, might have to be moved because I wouldn't be able to get around the kitchen in a wheelchair with the bowl there. Um, so I, that's what I was doing this morning. Then I went to the pool. And of course, that's where I'm going to be every day, the pool. And I did two kilometres. And whilst I was swimming up, up and down my two kilometres, I was considering how I'm going to practice getting out of the pool because they've told me that unless I can get out on my own, I have to use their chairlift. Now, if you know me, you'll know I do not want to be outwardly disabled in any way, shape or form. So I'm going to have to practice getting up off the ground onto one leg and standing up. Now, bear in mind, I'm balancing on my knee replacement leg, which never got its balance back before we started with this left leg problem. So that's another issue. Then what did I do next? The shopping. Now, what I've been trying to do is use my crutches and just one leg to get used to what it feels like for my shoulders. Have you ever considered how far you walk around the supermarket? There is no way at the moment that I could do that on crutches on one leg without a prosthetic. There is no way. So I would need to use a wheelchair. Now, I hate the idea of wheelchairs. I've been in one before, temporarily after my knee replacement. The world all happens up here and you don't even think about that when you're in a, when you're not in a wheelchair. People talk over the top of your head like you're not even there. Um, but it's something I'm going to have to get used to, which brings me nicely on to the next topic. The idea of being disabled. Now, I've always been a very firm believer of enable rather than disable. I have never considered anybody to be any different to anybody else. That's probably why I was a special needs teacher for so long. But I'm going to have to actually accept this is pretty shit. And my entire life is going to change from here onwards on Thursday, four days from now. I am going to be disabled. I'm going to be classed as disabled. I'm going to have to talk about the type of disability access and that sort of thing that I'm going to need. I'm not going to ever be able to pop to anywhere without considering whether I've got a wheelchair or the crutches on my leg or something or else. Have you ever considered how much you just take for granted the fact you've got two feet. So it's all really difficult because I'm having to wrap my head around a few things that I did not want to accept. And that is proving to be really quite tricky. The biggest one of those was the realization that one of my long-term um, goals has just been scratched completely and there's nothing I can do about it. Now, if you remember, back um, after the knee replacement, I said that I was going to try and get back on to the age group team for Team New Zealand and do an aquabike. Now, aquabike. There is no aquabike in paratriathlon. I cannot, as a paratriathlete, race as in the age group anymore. I'm a paratriathlete and so different accesses have to be considered, different courses, and I need to have a handler in transition. So I can't race at that level with able-bodied athletes anymore. Now, when I sat and thought about that, that was a massive mental adjustment for me. And I am I still haven't actually wrapped my head around that fact that I will never, ever be an age group athlete again. And that's actually really hard to deal with. 
So I've been reading the para triathlon rules and I've contacted Triathlon New Zealand um, and the only uh, format at that level, if I wanted to try and get back to that level for, um, as a para triathlete is sprint triathlon. Now, do you know what that means? That means I need to run. Now, I've always chosen not to after they gave me the knee replacement. And I was talking to a doctor today who said they that I perhaps want to talk to somebody about the shortening, the, the revision follow-up for the knee replacement because it will be under more pressure because it will be holding me up. Um, uh, and if I want to do a para triathlon at national level, uh, then I'm going to have to do a, a run. And I've thought about it. Now, I've already been told I can have a blade and all that sort of thing. But don't you think it's really quite ironic that I've completely scratched the idea of running and decided to change sports effectively? And then they chop my leg off and then I'm considering running again. It's, like, it's quite ironic, really, when you think about it. So, yeah, I'm really going to have to give that some thought um, and ask a few other people who've had a knee replacement and they're running again what, how it's gone for them. Um, but yes, that is a big change for me, is the fact that I'm not ever going to be an age group athlete again. And it's, I had nothing I can do about that. And finally, uh, we, we had a farewell to the leg party. Now, thank you, Liz, for doing that for me. Um, she organised it and most, most of, sorry, Gemma, most of the Riding to Hell staff came and a few other friends. And uh, we just had a get together and they spent the entire time poking fun at me and the loss of my leg and all the jokes they can make and things like that. Speaking of which, I've got a stack of T-shirts and I've got a little plan, actually, uh, for what I'm going to do um, in hospital and I'm going to go and see my printer tomorrow and I'm hoping they'll do what I want them to do and also I was thinking about mobilizing around the house so think about the things that you take for, for, for granted like making a cup of tea and go and sit in front of the TV if I'm on crutches then there's nothing I can no I haven't got any hands now I've been on crutches before but sometimes when you want to carry something you sort of do without well if you haven't got a bloody leg you can't can you I'm going to have to have the crutches so I'm going to have to think about how I can do that instead and I've got a little plan and if it comes before Wednesday I will show you what I'm planning It'll take about six weeks for the swelling to go down before I can use this device but I'm hoping that it will work a treat whilst I'm waiting for a leg and then finally I was doing the washing and I was rolling the socks up and then I suddenly looked at these socks and thought next week this is this lot of socks here will last me eight days instead of four I'll only need half as many socks as I used to before how cool is that <laughs> you have to laugh because if you don't you'll cry <laughs>